Alrighty, folks, today's video, agar and media preparation and melt-in. We're going to use a standard LMEA. We're going to start with 8 grams of strong gelling agar agar powder, or 10 if you don't know, or if it's medium. 6 grams light malt extract. I like this light stuff from Brias. I think it's a Pilsen malt extract. Again, here's a review of the recipe. This will make you around 20 of the 90 millimeters or around 40 to 50, 60 millimeters. Don't forget to use that filter like a taco. Mmm, tacos. Now we went ahead and we dumped that powder in that bottle first for a reason. When we dump our water in it, we'll mix it up for us a little bit instead of giving it time to uh, clump up by pouring the powder on top. All we're going to do here is we're just going to put the cap on and shake it up. If you end up with stuff stuck on the bottom because you had moisture stuck in the bottom of your bottle, turn that bottle upside down and the bubbles on the bottom cavitating will cause that stuff to break free and it will mix up for you. Now we're just going to go ahead and add our magnet and our uh, top here, our, our pouring ring, so that we can go ahead and show you our first method, the stir plate method. And jump right into it here. Now we're going to go ahead and speed this up for you because this one takes a little while. Probably takes one of the longest. About as long as the stove top, I guess. Anyhow, you'll notice over time that it starts to get clearer as we're heating it up and it melts in the agar, as they say. And once it gets to this clear stage, you're about ready to go ahead and add some color if you want to. Most people uh, don't need to. I don't recommend that you add color unless you really like color. It's not necessary. It's cool for a contrast, uh, but otherwise just cool to look at. And uh, I know all my customers sure like it, so I use lots of fancy colors, and they sure show off that uh, mycelium well, but it isn't necessary. <laughs> Method 2, stove top. This one is more popular. It's because everybody's pretty much got a stove. Uh, you'll notice here that I've got my agar powder. I've got my water. In this case, it's a little bit hot. Got some extra tools there for later for uh, pouring it into our media bottle. In this case, you'll notice that I don't pour my water in the pot first. I, in fact, pour in the powder. The reason being is because I'm kind of cheating and using hot water to speed up the process a little bit. In most cases, you want to add cool water. In this case, I add the powder first because when I add the hot water, the agitation from the pouring actually mixes it up a bit. And then I can grab my fork and mix it up. It would have been a lot quicker if I had that fork handy, but I did not, in fact. <laughs> Now you're going to go for a medium heat. You don't want it too hot because it can burn the agar. It can kind of caramelize just like sugars. This is a, a mixed recipe. You want to mix it every 30 seconds or so or continuously mix it if you're that type of person. I am kind of semi-lazy and I was doing several things at once while doing this video. But we'll go ahead and we'll speed it up here and you can watch it go. And I think it maybe took about... 20 minutes probably about the same length of time that the stir, uh, stir stir plate method worked and you can kind of see again it gets clearer as it goes it's just the agar melting in it's odd that a powder melts uh, but you can get it in a solid form and it makes more sense visually than that it melts into the liquid uh, but it does dissolve and you want it to kind of almost boil over a couple times to get it perfect You want to let that cool for about 10 to 20 minutes before pouring. Got several little options here. We have our funnel and our pitcher. I'm going to go ahead and kind of cheat. You could just pour it, freehand pour it. You know, if you, if you pour enough agar, you can get good at it. I just figure I'll be lazy here and use all of them. <laughs> uh, so use the pitcher with the nice fine tip to pour into the fine tip funnel, and it goes right into the bottle. Real easy peasy. Can't get any easier than that. Anyhow, you just want to make sure you let it cool so you don't burn your hands there. That one is ready to go into the sterilizer. All right. Method three, the microwave. Most people have a microwave. This one's pretty easy. We have the same LMEA recipe as before. We have our cool to cold water. And we have all our other gear. I'm going to toss that magnet. We don't need it because we're not going to use the stir plate for this method. 
We'll go ahead and use our fancy filter there for a funnel and dump it right in. We'll add our water. Again, this kind of agitates it as we pour it in. That's why we put the powder in first. Kind of does some of the mixing for us. I'm all about doing the work in advance, plus it helps to avoid some of that clumping. Anyhow, we're just going to shake it in a completely nonviolent manner. Cha-cha-cha, as they used to say. And we'll go ahead and we'll stick it in the microwave, and we will start in one-minute increments. And uh, from there on, you kind of just play it by ear, see how hot it gets. Some microwaves are different than others. You might be going 30 seconds at a time. The key ingredient here is to pull it out every minute to 30 seconds and mix up those ingredients that kind of settle to the bottom there. I like to stir it just like this, kind of easy to do on the countertop like that and avoids a lot of the spilling when that when it gets hot you don't want to get it all over yourself anyhow we'll keep doing this until it again gets to where it's almost boiling or tries to boil over out of the bottle as you'll see here pretty soon we'll get to that point sort of clearing up as we go this method it really clears up quickly you you just see it in that last couple minutes like here and you just got to watch it very closely See that foam line at the top? That's kind of your warning indicator. And you can also see the, the powdery or the gelling stuff moving off of the bottom there from the boiling action. Now we're going to go ahead and let it boil up once. And then we'll stop the microwave. And we'll go ahead and boil it up twice for a 500 milliliter. And this kind of helps to do some of the mixing action and gets it extra hot. It actually takes a few minutes after this for the actual agar to gel into the, the media or the blend, the solution that we have there. So you will see now that it's sat for a couple minutes and it's nice and clear. That's how you get that clear agar. Easy peasy. Can't beat that. Not with lemon squeezy. I don't know why I said that, but much love, my friends. Rock on!